celebration. But these are uncertain times. The Bangladeshi parliament has been dissolved and long-time rival to the former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, former Prime Minister and opposition leader Khalida Zia, has been released after years under house arrest. The army met with student protesters. The coordinators of weeks-long student protests released this video on Facebook with their demands. We will not accept any other government other than the one proposed by us. We will not accept the government supported by the military or the fascists. Any proxy government or government against the people will not be accepted. They are calling for economist and Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus to be the chief advisor to any interim government. 84-year-old Yunus won the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize for his work in combating poverty. On the streets, there is still disbelief at the events of the last 24 hours. Former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's residence, once impossible to penetrate, now overrun by the people. The blanket headline across the country, Hasina falls and flees. Everyone is talking about it. We need peace, that's it. We are poor working class people who are daily wage earners. We just want to live in peace. I think what happened on Monday, the vandalism, it was not appreciated. The palace belonged to the people like us. We will have to pay for reconstruction. The question now, what will Bangladesh's political future look like? Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. Let's speak now to Tanvir Chowdhury, who's live for us in Dakar. What is it like on the streets of Dakar today after the, the celebrations and uh, the jubilant scenes that we saw in the aftermath of Sheikh Hasina's resignation? It's quite normal. I'd put businesses are back on, you know, shops are open, but people are a bit apprehensive and also very tense because there's been a lot of vigilantes, you know, uh, destroying properties of uh, former ruling party members, you know, hotels were burned, uh, businesses belonging to the former ruling party members were burned, many people were killed out of revenge. And this is why the students are coming out in the streets and declaring openly that this has to stop. And they've been actually managing the traffic and guarding properties. So this is our properties, taxpayers' properties. You cannot destroy this. Uh, this has been a concern because the police has been off the street. They became the sort of the enemy of the crowd. You know, the people said that they were responsible for all this killing. Police are backtracking. They put their demands on coming out for duty. So the army is patrolling. The student is helping that. There is a sort of a lawlessness situation that existed yesterday. It's improved much better now. But people are concerned without police and law enforcement agency, things could get worse because there are certain groups of people who are into vandalism and taking revenge. And that needs to be stopped. That's what called for by the politicians, civil society, and definitely by the students who are right now in meeting with the president along with the chiefs of Air Force, Navy, and the Army. They're negotiating the terms for the uh, interim government. There's also a few members from the civil society in that meeting. We don't know the outcome yet. They were supposed to sit 3 p.m. local time, which is 9 GMT, but that never came out. So I think they're right now meeting and maybe some declaration come out either tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. That's the best we know so far. Mariam? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Tanvi Chowdhury and Dakar reporting to us. Also, please say that we have uh, Hassan Mahmoud, he's a professor at Northwestern University here in Kato's research focuses on Bangladesh. So it's very nice to have you with us to talk about this story. Thank you for having me here. Seems as though from what Tanvir was saying that the political vacuum has caused something of a security risk as well. There are fears of violence and reprisal attacks, especially against Awami League officials. Will the army be able to maintain some level of control over the situation? Um, I, I hope so, because army had been doing peacekeeping missions uh, abroad as well as inside the country for a long time, and it has a good reputation in maintaining law and order situation uh, during these kinds of volatile time in the past. So I hope uh, that army will be able to um, uh, uphold their its reputation in keeping peace, uh, uh, keeping law and order. Uh, like they did before. And also a lot of people, particularly the protest, uh, protesters, they also believed uh, that army uh, would be in their side and uh, help in restoring as well as maintaining law and order. 
Yeah, because they've made it clear they absolutely do not want a government that is led by the military. They want a civilian, civilian government, free and fair elections. What do you make of the release of the opposition leader, the jailed opposition leader, Khaled Zia? Uh, that is, of course, a very uh, positive development and pleasant development, particularly for at least uh, one third of the entire population, because they cheer her as... Uh, a good leader as uh, someone who would uh, who is a uh, you know politician of principle and uncompromising with corruption and other kinds of things uh, and more particularly she had been jailed uh, uh, for reasons that people do not believe that uh, she deserve a jail time much yeah. rests on the military at this point in time I, I know you say they command the respect of the population they're enormously influential and for now, they are saying that they will respect the demands of the protesters by handing power back to the people. So it seems as though the course that Bangladesh takes will depend very much on whether the military will honor their commitments. Um, I'm really hopeful and optimistic about, uh, about the military uh, keeping their promise. And I have seen, because I have seen uh, many positive developments to believe so. For example, it, uh, although it has not been officially declared yet, but uh, the head of the caretaker government has been uh, chosen by the protest movement organizers, and uh, he has already been accepted uh, as the head of the interim government. So this is a huge, hugely positive development. And as you have just heard from Tanvir Choudhury that the leaders of the protest movements have been in meeting with uh, president and other like uh, decision makers at this point. I hope that uh, they come up with, a, um, with a, an interim government inclusive and um, uh, inclusive of diversity, uh, just like the movement itself. Because in the movement, we see, we, we see that people from every walk of life, from yeah. all sections of it's society, not just participate. the students. You have families. You yeah. have uh, workers. You have a broad array of civil society yeah. that have come together to uh, to try and bring stability and democracy back to the country. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hassan Mahmoud. Thank you. Time for the weather.